Okay, I'm starting a little early today. We have a different camera set up. So I'm gonna wait a couple minutes, but uh, wait till people get online. And uh, so how is everybody doing? Cool, just checking here. Okay, now, <clears throat> all right. Hello everybody, I'm giving it uh, another minute or so because we have a brand new setup. Uh, <clears throat> what I didn't realize was that when they updated, okay, hey Ben, how are you? Okay, I can read everything here. So, uh, but anyway, what I did not realize was uh, when they updated on Facebook, uh, my camera was completely outdated. It was a top of the line at one time. All right. Hey, Steve Fisher, I see. Okay, Renee, hello. Uh, Douglas, hello. Uh, hey, Ben, how are you? Okay, I can read all this stuff. It's great. Willie, all right, cool. All right, Brett, how are you? It's good to see you again. Uh, Joe, how are you? Okay, I'm going to give it another uh, 30 seconds, then I'm going to start. As soon as it says... 4 p.m. California time. Can everybody hear this good? Hey, hey, Mary Beth. Can you hear that good? Hey, Walt, how are you? Okay, Ben, uh, somebody type. Can you hear this? Hey, Diane, how are you? Can you guys hear that good? Does that sound good? Okay, hey Mary Beth, how are you? Okay, great. All right, here we go. Um, this, the entire series, hey Thomas, how are you? Uh, it's good to see you again, hear from you again, I mean. Um, this entire series is sponsored by Sawtooth Guitars and Chromacast uh, musical products. And if what you can see here is this is one, hey Jonathan, okay. What you can see here is this is one of my brand new signature guitars. And then I'll go into the lesson. Hey, Ed, how are you? Ed Muscatelli, uh, we're friends from high school. Uh, I see Joe online. Um, anyway, let's see. But the image is reversed. Uh, that I can't do anything about. Um, anyway, I'm just doing what Facebook is doing. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to talk about a little bit are these signature guitars. And then I'm going to start playing. Uh, hello, Luis, how are you? A lot of people are coming online now. I have started a new signature guitar line. It's called the MAB line. Now you don't see my name anywhere. I don't think that's necessary, but these were designed uh, with myself and the people from Sawtooth. Uh, okay, guitar could be a little louder. Okay, great. Talking is good, okay. I don't know why the image is mirrored. I have no idea. Let's turn this up a little. Okay, anyway, if the image is mirrored, uh, too bad, this is Facebook. So I, I can't really, I'll see what I can do about that. Uh, but anyway, this is one of my new signature guitars. It's called the M24. Uh, it is very reasonably priced. We're talking about the initial model is in the $400 price range. And what's cool about this guitar, it has a top of the line, real German Floyd Rose. This is like the one you would get in a $5,000 guitar. And so uh, Sawtooth is able to do things that a lot of companies aren't, and what we uh, aren't able to do. And what we wanna do a as a company is to bring guitars to people at a super high quality that are very affordable. In this world, in this economy, I mean, let's let's face it, you can't, you know, a lot of people can't go out and spend, uh, hi, Marie, Maria, oh, it's Maria, hi, how are you? Maria Carlino, I know her very well. Uh, anyway, um, what we want to do is to be able to present guitars to you that have extremely high quality. Hey, Nick. And uh, hey, Austin, how are you? And uh, 
so that are very affordable. And people say, well, you can't put a top of the line Floyd Rose on a guitar at that price. Most companies can't, but we can. Okay, now let's get to the lesson. All I can tell you is this. I've had a long history of designing uh, signature guitars and I've had a lot of success with it. The sawtooth guitars are gonna be the best ones I've ever designed. Uh, we don't have to rely on graphics to sell it, uh, although graphics are cool. Uh, maybe in the future we will, but we have parts on these guitars at a price point that virtually no company can beat. You can't. Uh, even from the medium uh, size jumbo frets, you know, people say, what does that mean, man? Not like a 6100 to 6105. Um, it's kind of like if you have a steak, and it's medium or it's well done. Well, well done would be jumbo, medium would be thin. Well, we have a fret size in between that no other company has, okay? So it's kind of like scale lengths. You have, you know, uh, two different companies that make the ones that are the most competitive and there's one company that makes one in between. Well, guess what, they're popular. Nobody makes this fret wire uh, this size that we have, it's a medium jumbo. And so what do we mean by that? That people that are purists that like Les Pauls and Tellies and, you know, Strats will like this. But also, if you are a shredder and you're used to that 6100 series, um, I've had that for a long time, but I like these better. I like this better. It's more traditional and forward thinking at the same time. And nobody but Sawtooth has this. Okay, now let's get to the lesson. I'm going to play... Now, so you see my string dampener here? Let's move this down just a little bit. Okay, I'm Michelangelo Badio, and we are ready to talk about, let's see, we are ready to talk about the lesson today. Now, a lot of people, what I did with this lesson, let me just adjust this camera down just a little bit so you can see the guitar. Um, okay, let's see. Um, what I wanted to do on this lesson, okay, some people are messaging me through WhatsApp and things. You got to cool it, all right? I'm getting, my, my phone is getting blown up here. Okay, thank you, uh, friends and neighbors and everybody. Okay, so anyway, what I wanted to do on this lesson is listen to you. <clears throat> because if, um, you know, like, I, the, you know, one of the, for, I'm going to just say it. One of the seven deadly sins. Oh, is that Andy? Hey, Andy, how are you? One of the seven deadly sins, you know, when, when you think, or seven deadly fears, not sins, I, I take that back. Um, I'm sorry, this is a different format and I'm just getting used to it now because I'm making sure it's high resolution. Okay, so um, what I wanted to talk about is things that, that really you have, you have questions on. And, and one, of, one of the things that a lot of people I have, and it is called the seven deadly fears, you know, where the, you have the, the fear of being broke, the fear of not being loved, the fear of growing old, the fear of dying. Well, one of them is the fear of criticism. And it's a really important thing. You know, if you read 99 uh, things about you, comments that say, oh, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you are God. And then you read one that goes, you suck, you suck hard, dude, really hard, dude. And so all of a sudden, the 99 don't mean anything anymore. You fixate on the one. So when you fixate on that one, you become, oh my God. I mean, nobody likes criticism, but being a famous person or being known or just putting your things out there, you're going to have to deal with it. And here's the thing that, that I wanted to impart to you. One of the things that, that people criticize sometimes, you know, with, with me is that if I'm talking in these lessons, that I'm talking and not showing enough examples. 
Well, here's what I'm going to say to you, because this is the, and, and that's not really even a bad criticism. I consider that an observation, but sometimes the way people say it, they're just in a bad mood. And so here's what I can tell you. I have so many instructional programs out, and guess what? They're with one company. You know how many different uh, programs, uh, instructional program companies I've been with in my career? Two. One was called Starlix, and then the other, and that was only for a couple of years, Metal Method. Virtually 90 plus percent of my entire career has been with Metal Method Productions. When I talk about this, what I'm trying to do for you is to say, you can do it. You can do this. That See, you can't teach talent. I can't teach talent. I can't say, okay, you are born with the ability to group. I can't do that. I can't say. I can't teach that. I can show you rhythm, but I can't teach. I can't teach talent. But what I can teach is technique. Now, if you want, what I want you to get out of these is to say, look it, here are the concepts because there's a lot of exercises online. What I highly suggest, metalmethod.com. You go to Metal Method, or if you don't already have it, get speed kills, get my instructional programs. There are so many exercises. I have hundreds of exercises and things that I can do to help you that are very specific, very written out. But what I wanna do in these uh, talks here is to give you an overview and also something that a lot of people want to know. They want to know, you know what? I'm doing this okay. I'm doing this right and I can get better. And so a lot of what I do here, besides, you know, the playing is the methodology, the, the way that you can actually get better, the, the belief in yourself. You know, uh, Henry Ford, who, who built Ford cars, had, had the, one of the greatest sayings ever. He said, whether be, you believe you can or you can't, you're right either way. So right off the bat, I had a comment the other day because I said in the Speak Hills program, I'm going to give you the keys to the Lamborghini. And somebody wrote to me, well, I don't really want the keys to the Lamborghini because the insurance is so expensive, most Americans can't pay for it. I'm like, what? And I thought to myself, you can't. This categorize that one and you can't. In other words, that just that sentence alone is a defeatist attitude. It says you're never going to attain this, so why even bother? Hey, man, whether you can, you believe you can or you can't, you're right either way. Well, you're right. You can't do it. So you've proven yourself correct. I just don't think like that, and I don't think a lot of you think like that. Now, we're going to talk about something that a lot of people have asked me, palm muting. Now, it's very simply this. Let me put, is that Sean there? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of people online. Okay, this is great. Now, also too, uh, before, now I'm moving back and forth. So I'm not, I mean, I'm a smart guy. You know, when I do my instructional programs, it's only about instructional, but I'm getting questions flying in. And I wanted to tell you about something special we're doing. Every week, I'm going to be doing these free lessons. But on Thursday, May 21st, we are doing a guitar clinic sponsored by Go DPS Music, Sawtooth Guitar, Sawtooth Amps, and Chromacast Musical Products, and it's going to be acoustic guitar. I'm going to play an entire set of acoustic music. That's going to be really cool. I'm going to play Peace. I'm going to do, again, my version of Dream On. I'm going to play Long Way From Home by Nitro. I'm going to play some really cool songs. I'm also going to do some jazz standards. I'm going to whip out uh, some of my country music and play. I'm going to play A New Day uh, live. So you're going to see some really cool things. And it's all on different sawtooth guitars. They make really incredible acoustics. Okay, now getting back to palm muting. I have talked about this uh, for a few of the lessons about how there's two picking disciplines where you either put one of your fingers on the guitar or more like I do, 
or you have a free-floating mechanism. And somebody was arguing with me online. I can tell you guys one thing. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not a physicist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I might be a little psycho sometimes, but I know one thing, music. And I make the study. If I say something, I usually have a way to back it up. So I was talking about Joe Bonamassa. See, Joe Bonamassa plays with this free-floating mechanism like this, like Al Mila, but every once in a while when he starts out, he'll start this way, but then he starts moving and he gets into this. So somebody was arguing with me, no, Joe Bonamassa doesn't do that. Yes, he does. And so there's no rule that said you can either put your fingers on or you can have a closed free-floating mechanism. So you can play like this. It's talking about your fingers not touching the guitar. That's what I'm talking about. There's two disciplines, and usually feet, people fall into one or the other category, but sometimes they do both. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not illegal. It's not against the law to say, I'm going to play with an open, with a position like this, and then occasionally put my fingers down. Why not? You're trying to play music. You're not trying to, to be, you know, mechanically perfect all the time. So here's how I can explain uh, palm muting. See, a lot of people, you know, especially down picks, you know. Now, you know, people used to say to me, hey, dude, when you play Master Puppets, bro. Why don't you all down pick it? You know why? Because I don't have to. I like to alternate pick. It's my style. Let Metallica do it. They wrote the song. I'm doing the Michelangelo video version of it. I'm not trying to copy them. And so um, that's what I'm talking about. And so, but with palm muting and um, with this kind of muting like this, what you are really doing, see, to attain velocity, what you're actually playing, instead of like this, you kind of rest your hand on the bridge or really close to the bridge of the guitar like this. Now, I'm gonna give you an example of no palm muting. Now here we go. A little more. Now you notice I had the string dampener up. So, you know, because the purists would say, well, dude, you like the string dampener down, man. So like anybody can play clean with it down, dude. Well, that's the idea. But I didn't to show you, I don't need this, but I love it. And I'll explain that. But when you do palm muting, instead of like this, it's got a more percussive sound. And so, sorry, I almost missed the foot switch. I'm sitting down here with all this gear around me, and I'm like, where is it? So, what I'm trying to say, okay, how do you palm mute on a Floyd without throwing it out of whack? It's a good question, Ben. Uh, but see, what I'm doing is I'm not to throw a Floyd out of whack when you're palm muting. See, you don't palm mute against the bottom part. See, he's talking about this, watch. That's like the stone version of palm muting, bro. And so, no, what I do is this. You don't play at the end of the bridge. You play at the beginning. See, like this. So you can beat the heck out of it, but it's gonna stay in tune. So you play and you mute before, and you rest your hand gently on the strings. But, And so, but do you see how fast and clean it is? It's not rocket science. What you do is you have to find 
um, you have to play a little bit in front of the bridge because like Ben was saying, uh, my friend Ben, that did comment on this, if you move your hand too far back, what you're going to do, especially with a Floyd, so you get the old school. You don't want that. <laughs> Maybe you do, you know. You know, if that's what you want, that's what you get. Uh, so if you believe you can do that, you can. If you believe you don't, you ain't gonna do it. And so, but what I like to do, and what is necessary, is you put your hand, you rest it. For example, here, watch. Now again, no string dampener down. See, if you can see it up close, see when I'm playing, see you just rest this part of your hand there. And so the trick is to have a relaxed picking technique. Uh, what, what does it say? What are you doing in that? Um, okay, I, I don't really understand what you're trying to say. Okay, anyway, I'm trying to answer some questions and, and go over this, the mechanics of this. But the great thing about palm muting is the sound is just very, very aggressive. Now, here's the great thing. Whether you use that free-floating system that I talked about. Now, again, this is not my picking style, but I worked on it, so what? Okay, now that's not normally the way I play, but see, I played that free-floating. It's actually pretty easy to palm mute when you're doing this. But if you rest your hands somewhere on the guitar, it's still very easy because you're really just moving your hand at an angle, but you can still play the normal way. And that's the key, that you can still play and you can be aggressive at it. Okay, now, um, I hope that that sheds some light on it, but also too, I cannot stress enough that what I really want to teach for you here, I've genuinely wanted to help the guitar community. My goal was very simple. I wanted to make, I wanted to elevate the technical part of rock guitar to the status of jazz and other, uh, and, and classical guitar and other guitar disciplines that I felt were technically, for lack of a better way to say it, more advanced. I mean, when you look at guitars, from the 1950s that played with Elvis Presley or that, you know, like all those, you know, uh, um, all those old classic songs from, from the 50s, those guitar players were, were jazz bass. And even when you play country, you have a background in chords and progressions. I mean, to be a bluegrass guitar player, you have to know some changes. And, and so really it comes down to jazz and it comes down to a knowledge of playing and a facility in your technique that the early rock guitars from the 1960s didn't have. Now, it doesn't take anything away from the greatness of a Jimi Hendrix or, or the Jeff Becks or, or the Eric Clapton's. They were striving for something different. It was a new sound, it was a new genre, it was a new kind of music. But technically wise, you're not gonna have Jimi Hendrix play even remotely close technically as Django Reinhardt or the guitars from the jazz eras that came before. I mean, he could probably uh, have jammed with Charlie Parker and all those great jazz players, but to play those outside lines and all that, that's not something that, that really Hendrix strived to do. Hendrix created new sounds. He made a guitar talk. I'm a big Hendrix fan. I'm just, tr I'm not criticizing this. I'm just saying that's what happened. That was my goal. I said, well, look at, you know, you've got these jazz players, gypsy jazz players, bluegrass players, that, that the music is here and the technique is here. And then you have rock guitar that the music, and I'm talking about the writing, you're not gonna write better rock songs than ACDC or Led Zeppelin, but I felt that other genres, like even in Mozart's day, the musicianship and the music was here, but see in rock, the musicianship was here, I felt on a technical level. We're not talking about musically. That's, that's something completely different. That's subjective. We're talking technical facility. I just thought that rock playing technically was here, but the music level was here and that it needed to rise. Well, guess what? Who, what do we have today? 
the John Petrucci's of the world, the Michelangelo Badius of the world, the Ingve Malmsteins of the world. We rose the level of rock musicianship to equal that of other genres. That was my goal. That's why I'm here today trying to help. And, and so, and a lot of these young guitar players, oh my God. And so, anyway, to, uh, so I hope that, that you, this is what I want you to learn from these lessons that, that first of all, I don't want to sound like some positive mental attitude guy, but I'm a positive mental attitude guy. You can do this. See, talent and musicality is up to you. See, I never teach talent, and all the years that I taught guitar, I never said, I don't like this guitarist. I like this guy. Go this way. See, that's politics. That's music politics. I'm not a musical politician. I don't really care what you like. It's not that I don't say that I don't care. It's not my business. If you like Nickelback, if you like Miley Cyrus, if you like Megadeth, if you like Metallica, if you like Charm, if you like anybody, it doesn't matter to me what you like. The techniques are the same. That's why I separate it. So when you are doing things, and I'll bring back to the palm muting. For most metal guitar, and I would say Metallica, and actually first Judas Priest popularized this. I remember when I first heard Green Manalishi, and you heard Green Manalishi. That was evil. That was mean. That was bad. That's the sound I wanted. And you get that by palm muting. And palm muting literally to shift your hand. Use this part of your hand, rest it on the strings, but don't like rest it so hard you're gonna go. It's pain, the guitar's crying out, saying, why are you doing this to me? You don't do that, you just rest it. Then when you play. See, instead of this. Now the cool thing is that you can still play really fast. Now what I did too is I added a little legato playing. Uh, let's see, I love talking a good pop song and meddling it out. There you go. Uh, again, you can do whatever you want. But when you do this palm muting technique, you can lighten up just a little bit and really create any kind of sound that you want uh, based on the techniques that you have, meaning alternate picking, legato, even sweeps, you can go. See, if I was going to play a sweep uh, using my neck position. I can do that, but if I mute it, watch. Here is again, I'm gonna put this down, I'm gonna show you. Here's without palm muting. Here's with palm muting. See, it just gets a little bit more aggressive sound. Now, one of the things I wanna talk about too, and then I'm gonna to get to alternate picking and economy picking is Nowadays, music on guitar and music in general, the youngest generation, uh, my nephew's 18 years old, so I'm talking about 25 and under. Um, you are really some of the greatest musicians I've ever seen. And then you get, you know, the, the millennial generation. You know, I know that people like to, you know, cause dissension in, in the media and all that. See, I've never been one like that either. I think, you know, I've devoted my whole life to helping guitar players. So, you know, and I've been around a long time. So, you know, I'm uniquely qualified to talk to you about this because the younger guitar players that are watching now can see somebody like me and say, wow, man, I can still play really fast and really good even when I get older. See, that's the beauty of music. It's not like sports. It's not like sports where when you're 30 years old, you're not like you were when you were 20. 
a 30 year old can outdo a 20 year old in music because not only do they have uh, experience, but they, they have the, still the technical facility, but they have the knowledge and the, the life experiences. When I play a note, or I play music, I have an entire lifetime of experiences, 58 plus countries. I've actually been in more than 60. I have this, you know, multiple major labels. I have a new record coming out now that I'll, I'll talk about, but I, in my brain, I have a lifetime of experience and that I can put into the music now, but I still have the technical facility. And that's because all the things that I tell you in these lessons, I practice myself. Uh, it, it doesn't benefit me to do something free unless it helps me. It's, it's like y nobody does nothing for nothing. But I want to tell you, I genuinely want to help you. I, I truly do. But also by helping you and being as honest as I can, because you never hear me go, well, honestly, it was like this. Well, that implies to me that what? You're not always honest. Like when you don't say honestly, like you could be dishonest. So I don't, you know, and other people say it, so it's, a, it's the way they talk, but I don't use that because I think like that. What I'm trying to do is help you. And if I can help you understand, it helps me to understand me. And that's why I'm still here. Now, uh, one of the things before I get to these uh, uh, new lessons here is uh, I have a new album coming out tomorrow. Friday, you are going to start seeing the album advertisements. I'm going to tell you what the name of the record is. More Machine Than Man. Who gave me that title? Guitar World Magazine. And, and uh, sorry, I wanted to grab a pick. When I was a columnist in Guitar World, uh, they did a lot of articles about me. And they said, more machine. They said, Michelangelo Badio is more machine than man. And so... Uh, I use that, and, and I notice, you know, some other guitar players are starting to kind of like put this in their, you know, like, you know, half, you know, cyborg, half this. Well, sorry, bros, I'm the guy. I'm more machine than man, not you. And, and so, uh, but anyway, the new record promo starts tomorrow. They're going to be doing pre-ordering. It comes out sometime in June. So the entire month of May... They're going to do these incredible bundles. The label is called Rat Pack Records. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with Rat Pack, uh, some pretty well-known bands like Metal Church, Michael Sweet, uh, KXM, which is uh, uh, the bass player Doug Pinnock from, from uh, King's X, George Lynch on guitar, we all know George, and Ray Lucier from David Lee Roth and Korn uh, on drums. And, and I mean... Rat Pack is a really great label. This is my second record with them. So you are going to start seeing tomorrow. We filmed two videos already for this album. It's not only going to be released, uh, you know, the way, you know, digitally, like we all know, you are going to be able to get CDs, vinyl, and cassettes. And we've already filmed two music videos for this. So, uh, Rat Pack Records, the Michelangelo Badio new, it's all new music. It's all original music. So there's uh, 13 songs on it, all new. Chris Adler lends his drumming expertise to a few of the tracks. And uh, also Victor Wooten plays an amazing guest bass solo. So I've got, and Andrea Martin-Jelly from the band Arthemis. He also plays with uh, 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 Dave Ellison from... Uh, uh, Megadeth. And so, uh, you know, he's fantastic. He did a great solo. I didn't have as many guest soloists on this album like I normally have, but I, I had something to say on this and it needed to be said by me. And so that's how I felt about it. But wait till you hear this. Uh, it's really an amazing record and you're going to start seeing the promo tomorrow 100% for sure. Uh, this virus thing uh, held it up for months. It was actually finished since last year. And, and uh, we were just been waiting to release it, and we were all afraid to do it, you know, because at the end of January, it's like, oh, my God, the whole world, it's like a pandemic, bro. We're going to die the plague of 2020. And so now 
All I know is I've been just holed up in my house. I'm like getting cabin fever already. I'm okay, I think. But uh, I'm kind of going crazy. And I can't wait to get on the road and tour. You know, I used to tell my mom, unfortunately, she's not here. I used to go, Mom, I've been home too long. I need like a rock star fix, man. Can I like sign an autograph or something? How about just go up on stage and just do one of these, huh? You know, and I called it the rock star fix. I literally do. I still to this day, and you know what? I need a rock star fix. It's like, I'm home. It's awesome. Lots of guitars to play. But I want to go out, like, go to a restaurant, sit down, have dinner, instead of picking it up with my mask of doom. I'm tired of looking like I'm in Slipknot. I want to go out and rock. So hopefully this is going to be over pretty soon. Now, enough of that tirade. Let's talk about a lesson. Alternate picking. Now, Again, if you want to get all the details, I have stressed details in 20-something plus years of instructional programs. MetalMethod.com. Get Speed Kills. It will help you. Speed Kills works. Methodology has been proven for centuries. I'm no dummy. I have a degree in music. I studied the methodology of people that came before me that, you know, the old uh, meme that, that if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. I'm a true believer of that. Um, I'm also a believer, a believer of always a student. If you think you can learn something new, you're going to learn something new. If you think you're defeated before you start, Henry Ford says you're going to be defeated. But Michelangelo Badio says, turn that thinking around and work on a technique. Techniques can be learned. And so what I do with alternate picking, I showed a, an example in Speak Hills that was pretty amazing. And it was an alternate picking exercise. And I like to play around the 11th to 14th frets when I'm working on exercises to show people. And the reason is, is because your hand position is really good. Now I'm, I'm holding the guitar up so you can see it, but the hand position is, is, is very comfortable. Actually, you play on stage like this a lot. You know, when I play on stage, I'm like this. It's not much different than holding a guitar like that. And I also keep the guitar uh, not rested on my leg, but like a classical guitar player. And the, again, the reason is like this. Because when you stand up and, and you sit down, you are basically in the same position to play. So anyway, I'm going to move my guitar up. But this exercise is amazing. When you work on alternate picking, you have, see, a lot of people, talent overcomes a lot of difficulties. Talent will overcome deficiencies in technique because if somebody has a great facility to play, just, you know, you just hear, you know, let's see, like, you know, you can hear that beat in your head, or you can hear, you know, Now, I've got a distortion sound here. I'm using Sawtooth amps. I have it set on the distortion setting, but they have a great clean sound too. But the, the moral of the story is if you have a musical mind, if you just hear things and you can groove, and you, if you can hear that and you can feel it, that's something I can't teach. And I, I said this earlier today, but I can't teach it. But what I can teach is the technique. And so what I did was I... If when you work on different techniques, what you want to do is isolate them. I am working on alternate picking today. Start with a short exercise. Watch your fretboard hand. Watch your picking hand. See that you are doing it right. Somebody's writing about diet, okay? Anyway, see, when you're doing this, it's correct. You don't want to miss a pick. Down, up, 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 down, up. Now watch. So, 
you can play this exercise. Now, again, I didn't have the string dampener down, okay? Because don't ever think that when, you know, that, that I, oh, I can't play unless this is down. That's not true. But uh, what younger guitar players know, they use, uh, I have a patent on this. This really works. Watch. Do you hear how that blocks things? Listen. Versus. And so when you play like this, it, it blocks extraneous string noise. And that's what you want to do. So what? Now, ex except for the last series of notes, I use two strings. And so, two, the metal two. And so, what you can do is once you learn a technique like that, you can combine short riffs and make short riffs longer and longer and longer. And here's an example one. Now, I'm going to start. Five and six, four and five, three and four, three and four again, two and three, one and two, one and three, two and four, three and five, three and six. All with one simple exercise. So what you want to do is take the exercises and speed kills. Now look, at there are great teachers out there. People like Paul Gilbert, he's great, you know. Uh, do you ever hear me slamming other guitars? No. When I talk to you, I am not criticizing like a lot of people do. Because here's the thing that I believe about criticism. Wise men don't need it and fools won't heed it. So if I sit there, you know, because a lot of times when people come to my page, they're not being cool when they criticize. See, they're like, well, do you like this song? Do you like this? That's not, that's, it's so, it's not even, to, in my mind, the way I think of it, it's not even educated. It's like, who is this person? Like, what, what do they have, a bad day? You know, I mean, you know, uh, uh, can't you just be civil and say, look it, you know, I've seen this, and, and so maybe you can, you know, clarify this for me. You know, it's like the thing when I was talking about Joe Bonamassa earlier. I analyzed his picking technique. I met Joe. We use very similar picks. I use a Chromacast jazz style pick. You see this thing? It's 1.3 millimeters. You see how pointed it is? It's made out of Delrin. Sorry, I'm going like, I'm trying to like find the center of the, there it is, there it is. But it's 1.3 millimeters death. And what I love about it is you get a jazz feel, but you don't have this jazz uh, more rounder sound. You've got a more rock sound. It's more percussive. It's brighter. Okay, so when you practice alternate picking, and again, if you want details upon details upon details, see, I'm giving you the overview and I'm giving you something more. I'm saying, see, I'm giving you life lessons here. This will help you for the rest of your life. Do it correctly. Start with small exercises. Short exercise, when I say small, I don't mean small. I'm, I'm sorry, that's not the right word. Start with exercises that have very few notes, uh, that ones that are more phrases than long. Watch this. And
Now, at the end, I got a little crazy doing some, like, more bluesy stuff. But the point is this. What I did is I'm showing you how to build long riffs from short and meaning, like, down, 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 down. Watch. Down, 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 down to six notes. Six notes of doom will be able for you to conquer alternate picking. Down, up, because what is the hardest thing to do in alternate picking? When you have three notes per string, because you can play four, you can play two. You can do the Zach while... You know, I mean, back in the old... I mean, you know, the old Jimmy Page stuff. Those are two notes per string. But here's what happens when you do two or four. It's symmetrical picking. Down, up, down, up down, up, down, up. But when you do three, which is metal three, two plus two is metal four minus metal one. We never add, we take away. It's kind of like the mosh pit. You start with a hundred people, a few will die. And so what we try to do is this. What, um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of great teachers out there. There's a lot of young players that are doing really cool new exercises. Those are all amazing. But you want to start from here, you work on this alternate picking. You work on those short exercises, why? See, because the question is, why are you doing this? You want to master hitting a new string on an upstroke, down, up, down, up. And people say, well, you want to do that, dude? Why don't you just hit the next string on that stroke, bro? It's like the one before. You know why? Because that's economy picking. That's another technique. You want to do that? See, now here's what's so great about C kills. Watch this bad boy. You can play this in alternate picking. Or economy picking. Now economy picking is very simply the string that you move to, the new string, you go in the same direction as the string you just left. So let's say there's three notes Per string. Let's just do it normal. One, two, three. Okay. Down, up, down. Now you're going to move to your next string. If you were doing alternate picking, you would do up. But if you're doing economy picking, you do it down. Down, up, down. So now you move. Then you hit the, uh, the next note, which would be up. If you want to come back down to your another string, you come back down sound-wise but picking on an up pick. Watch. Here's what I'm saying. It's actually not that complicated. Down, up, down, down, up, up. So the exercise that I showed you playing alternate picking you can do it with economy. I'm going to get real close to the camera. Watch. Here's alternate picking. Do you see my picking hand? Watch the picking hand. Now, did you see? Every note, down, up, down. See, it's like running. Nobody runs. That's economy running. Okay, it's economy picking. You run like this. That is alternate picking. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It doesn't matter where you go. That's up. It does not matter. Keep up with me on social. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's reading a little bit. Okay, it does not matter where you go. Down, up, down, up, down. Any string, anywhere. It's a consistent down, up, down, up. That is alternate picking. Strict, exact, perfect. Economy picking is different. Economy is amazing, but it's different. And, and see, great players 
combine the two. An Ingve Malmsteen, even me, as I've gotten older, I do, I'm really good at economy picking and I use it much more. But watch the same exercise instead of down, up, down, up. It's down, up, down, down, up, up. The same exact exercise. You can play the same exercise in alternate picking and economy. That's the beauty of speed kills. It works and it makes sense and you can do it and you will work on it and get it down. You will have techniques down that you couldn't ordinarily have because a lot of times people try, as teachers, they try to impress you with what they know. You know, they go, oh, you know, let's see, uh, color pointillism, uh, spread all and counterpoint. I know all that stuff. I have a degree in music. That's a teaching. Teaching is not going, oh, yes, the... The development section in Sonata Forum. And then after the development section, you have, first of all, you have the exposition. Then you have an intro theme. Then you have a subordinate theme. And then, then you know, the after the development section in Sonata Forum, it's the recapitulation. And it's like, oh, don't you know who I am? It's like, I must air oh, love it. You know, my name is, is Chad Pennington. Don't you know? Um, yeah, I know, but that's not teaching. Teaching is actually doing something that can be explained and that you learn. You know, being a great teacher is, is having the student learn. So let me show you this. Watch. Here is economy. See, down, up, down, down, up, up. Instead of alternate, down, up, down, up, down, up. See, everything is down, up, down, up. Economy's not like that. When you go to a new string, down, up, down, down. Then up, up. Now, here's the beauty of economy. It is fast. See, when I start playing, um, when I start playing um, like a... Alternate picking. A little legato there. When I'm doing strict alternate picking. Now watch this. I'm going to add economy picking to this. Alternate. Economy. how fast that is Frank and I said this in another thing Frank um, Frank uh, Gambali said this to me sorry I'm reading some of the comments here that you can sense something the economy picking at this yeah the economy picking is actually a fifth gear as fast as I can go on alternate picking I can kick it up a notch with economy but again you have to learn these techniques separately and that's what Speed Kills does. Now I'm gonna go over a few things. Here's what we talked about today. We talked about fretboard hand muting. We talked about alternate picking. We talked about economy picking. Those are the three. If you wanna get extremely in depth, get Speed Kills. Speed Kills works because I'm gonna give you the keys to the Lamborghini. But when people say, bro, I got the keys. Or, or you never gave me the keys, dude. You never gave me the keys to Lamborghini, bro. I said, yes, I did give you the keys. It's up to you to drive the car. Hey, Bill. I saw Bill Schneider there. And so, yeah, somebody said my brain is so fast. It's true. No drugs for an entire life. But you know what, though? You know why my brain is still really fast? I have a motto. I'm reading comments here. So that's why it gets a little disjunct sometimes. I mean, there's hundreds of comments flying in. So I'm trying to, you know, talk about the lesson, but I'm also, you know, talk about, these are life lessons here. I live this, you know, I say it every lesson. I live music. This is not just something that I, I do. You know, yes, it's my job, but I love it and I live it. Um, and I'm not livid about living it. And so, but I, I just love to play guitar and I still have the enthusiasm. Now, um, yeah, Michael Romeo. Yeah, he actually uh, told me that he watched my original uh, instructional program called the Starlix Video, which is actually, hey, MJ, 
which is actually available with Metal Method. But we talked about these things. If you want to get extremely in-depth, go to MetalMethod.com. Get my stuff. Because, but there are a lot of great teachers, like I started to talk about, uh, like people like Paul Gilbert. Uh, you know, there's a lot of young guitar players that are out now that are really good. And there's nothing wrong with learning from them. But the thing that separates what they do and what, what Speed Kills does and what I do is, I'll just say it right out, Paul Gilbert does not have a degree in music. It takes nothing away from his musicality. He's an amazing musician and he's an amazing teacher. But if I asked him who Jascon Dupre is and what Renaissance Counterpoint is, he probably wouldn't know that answer. Or if he did, did he was probably Googling it. I studied Jascon Dupre. I studied Renaissance Counterpoint. I studied Modal Counterpoint. I studied Counterpoint Fugues. I, I studied the, the two-part inventions, the, you know, the symphonies, the three-part inventions of Bach. This is my degree. And so does it make me a better guitarist? No, not at all. My talent is my talent. Uh, that's separate, but I'll tell you, my education has given me the ability to do one thing. I'm always learning. My education taught me one great lesson, always a student. So when you work on things like Speed Kills, that's where it starts. You start by this. You get your technique down, then work on the Paul Gilbert exercises or John Petrucci and all that because they do some really cool stuff. But it's not a book. If you got Paul Gilbert exercises or, or like a John Petrucci, that's not what you would find in the beginning of a book like the Hannon book for, for classical piano to learn technique or, or Cerny School of Velocity or Schmidt preparatory exercises because they have a different way of teaching. They're saying these exercises work for me. What I, my method is my exercises work for you. And because they work for you, they and I base them off of centuries of knowledge about how to teach orchestral music. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about my guitars. We have uh, this guitar. This is called the M24. It has a top-of-the-line German-made Floyd Rose. It is in the $400 price range. I also recommend a lot of you, all the young guitar players know this, it is no... It is not cheating to use a string dampener or to use, a, you know, they, they have a fret wrap. I'm not a big fan of fret wraps because you can't get it off like a locking trim. It, it gets stuck there, whereas a string dampener you can just pull off. But these work really great. Tony McAlpine uses them. A young guitarist by name of Gabriel Guardian uses them. Uh, they're, I use them. They're really amazing. They stop the extra string noise for my double guitar, but it also... It makes it so. It really adds so that you hear nothing but what you want to hear. And so this is the M24. Now I have another one. I'm going to do something pretty crazy here, okay? I'm going to, because we're using uh, my brand new phone here, um, I found out that my other expensive camera wasn't uh, working so good. So let's just move this. Okay, we're going to move around a little bit. Comment on George Lynch. I like him. Okay, watch this. Okay, we're going to go to another part of my studio. This is the sound stage in my studio. This is one of the ES series guitars from Sawtooth. Got my string dampener. This guitar is under 200 bucks. It rules. I love it. This is my burnt guitar. You can see it here. Check that bad boy out. Look at this. It's all burnt. Look at it up close. I mean, that thing is torched. Look at this. It's so cool. So we're going to be offering guitars that are burned as well. Now let's move a little bit more. This is the M24. This guitar lists for a uh, about $250, somewhere around there.
Is that cool or what? They make amazing guitars. Now, one of the things Sawtooth can provide to you, now here I'm in my recording studio now. I have multiple monitors. I actually moved that monitor here so I could see comments, but I realized now I'm gonna go upstairs just for a second, just to be weird. Uh, I can't, you know, propped bend technique, okay. Are the string dampeners available in Europe? I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure. Let me show you guys something. I'm walking up the stairs. Okay, I have a studio in my house and I've had it for a long time. This is a, a room of my guitars. Now I have over 160 guitars. That's my living room. Now I have, check out this sawtooth guitar. That is a telly. So now if you go here, that's what this looks like. Now also I'm in the dining room of my house. I have a lot of family heirlooms. That's a brass chandelier from the 1960s. I have many things that are well over a hundred years old. And I have something else that's kind of cool. I found a book from my family from 1924. And in it were nine four-leaf clovers that are 96 years old. So I had them professionally framed. And this is what I call my family room uh, because, you know, I, I'm the only one left. And so, you know, I have my nephew and my brother-in-law. But um, so I'm going to go back down in the studio. So it's very important to me because I love my family a lot. And so I have a room dedicated to them. But I can tell you this, out of all those guitars in that collection, the best signature guitars we're gonna do are the sawtooth ones. And the reason for it is this, they are the most forward thinking company I have ever worked with. Also too, sorry, also too, what they do, are they made by Samick? No, Samick's its own company, come on. And, and uh, so Sawtooth is Sawtooth. It's not made by somebody else. And so Sawtooth has their own factory. Sawtooth can do things that a lot of companies can't. And I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna play guitar anymore. You've seen me play a lot. The Sawtooth tube amps sound amazing. I did an entire tour with them. I did an entire tour using the guitars. If you know me uh, well enough that you know that I, I use what I say and I do what I say, um, one of the things that I love about the company, for example, just the string dampeners alone, I don't like these fret mute things. Um, but if you want to play modern riffs, there's no law against getting something like my string dampener. They're under $20, and you can find them at Chromacast. They're licensed by Chromacast, but Sawtooth has three main endorsees. Again, two plus two is metal four minus metal one. And so that is metal three. I am the main guitar in Dorsey. Rudy Sarzo from, let's see, Quiet Riot, Ozzy Osbourne with Randy Rhodes, and White Snake. Uh, he is the main bass uh, in Dorsey for Sawtooth and Vinnie Ampassy. Let's see, what did Vinnie play with when he first started? Oh, John Lennon. Well, he's, he was in a pretty big band called the Beatles. Uh, who else did he play with? Let's see, Ronnie James. Dio, you know, Rainbow in the Dark, and he was on Black Sabbath. And so, you know, rise, you know, rise up to legions of the brave. I don't even know what Ronnie James Dio said. I just know it was thunder and lightning and the dark and the light and rainbows in the dark and holy divers. I was like, you mean priest, like jumped in the water? And so I didn't know about his lyrics, but I loved his music. And so um, what, but Vinny is a phenomenal drummer and, and he represents the sawtooth drum line. And so, yes, I have Chromacast strings too. They're great. Uh, they're, they're, Chromacast makes great products, but don't let the price fool you. On my signature guitar, the M24, you get a top of the line original Floyd Rose. We're talking about the German made ones. The reason they can do that is because they can. Um, a lot of other companies wanna charge a lot of money you know, I, and I said this in the last lesson, if I had $30,000 and I wanted to get a great guitar, I just hire a dude to build, or dudes, or women dudettes to build me a real, it's not hard to make an expensive guitar. You can hire people to do that. What's hard 
is to make guitars like Sawtooth that are really reasonably priced. And that is hard. And to put phenomenal features. Okay, so anyway, uh, time's up here. So I, I just want to say, again, thanks to each and every one of you for, for coming here today. But just remember about these lessons. If you want the super details, get my instructional programs. But this is what I'm trying to do. I, I'm doing an overview. I'm answering questions. I want to talk about the products. I, I have a new record coming out May 21st on Thursday. We're going to be doing an acoustic clinic. So when you saw, if you saw the last one, very little talking, a lot of playing. And, and we're going to do multi-streams again where it's going to be on YouTube and Facebook. And then um, I just can't say enough about the companies I'm with. You know, um, I don't change companies very often in my life. But if I do, I have a reason. And I, I'm not slamming anybody. But Sawtooth is the present and the future. Um, a lot of companies live in the past. They think in the past. They work in the past. They live in the past. That's not where I live. That's not my home. And so my home is now and looking forward. So that's why we're up here doing it. I actually had my former company say, when I presented them with the idea of doing things, I'm like, that's not the job of the company. That's the job of the artist. I'm like, duh. No kidding, bro. You know, it's like they don't get it. So, hey, if they don't get it, more power to us that do get it. Remember, practice, 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 separate the techniques. If you want lesson after lesson, get my programs. When you start doing these things, look at other guitar players too. There's a lot of great things out there, but they don't have the methodology that I've got. And they haven't toured 58 countries and played thousands and thousands of shows and never been hurt like I have. And so I want to just say thank you so much for being here. I'm Michelangelo Badio. See you next Thursday, 4 p.m. California time.